Good afternoon, Mike. Hi, uh, Teresa. How are you doing? Doing great. Uh, have you modified your off-season schedule, uh, your OTAs at all, man the mandatory mini camp at this point, or uh, just proceeding as you always have? Well, I mean, we have a schedule that we try to stick to. Um, when, when we start any session, whether that be OTAs or rookie mini camp, <clears throat> and then sometimes based on a lot of factors, those change, and you know, it doesn't look a whole lot different. Um, try to make the schedule as efficient and as um, player friendly that allows them to learn and to develop. You know, I try to do that all the time. So, you know, I think maybe there, there would be some slight modifications from, from what things have looked like in the past, but you know, I feel like we're getting a lot of work in as it is right now. Teron. Hey, Coach, with Darrington Evans, you know, he's a guy that has receiver in his background. I know you said you're you're pretty comfortable with your group of receivers. Is he a guy that you envision getting some some time catching the ball, whether it's a slot or, or anything like that? Well, I don't know where he's going to line up, Teron, right now, but I know that Darrington's a you know has been a a, a versatile player. I, I know he's dealt with some some injuries. Um, you know, in his first year, but I would say that he, he's a player that we're excited about uh, and, and has some has some versatility. Um, he, he worked there today. Um, those are ideas that we try to have and just try to get him some some cross training work. And you know, a lot of those players that can handle you know more than than one particular role, you know, that we'll continue to add those those roles to them. Uh, and I say Darrington would be one of those players. Buck. I bumped back in the order today. Um, with, oh, yeah, you're batting in a third hole. That's pretty good, Buck. <laughs> uh, with with the second-year players that, that didn't quite have the normalcy of, of a regular offseason, understanding that things aren't completely normal, what, what are you hoping to, to see from them in terms of growth and, and how they're kind of taking advantage of these opportunities that they have? Yeah, you know, I think traditionally everybody looks at that year uh, between you know, year one and year two you know, as a big jump and, and, and we're, we're very hopeful and excited about um, that even more so than normal, just because of what they maybe didn't get last year uh, from a football perspective, but also, you know, from a, from a player engagement perspective, I think we, we believe uh, that our program led by Chicky Giassi and Mitch, and Dr. Sheila, you know, will help these players grow on and off the field. So those, those, some of those players in their second year will, will also have um, some follow-up sessions uh, from the Zoom meetings that they had last year. Uh, and then also just get them out on the field and you know, allow them to, to continue to work and, and take the opportunity to develop. Paul? Hey, Mike. Um, I'm curious how you, uh, I, I know you're a union guy and I know you respect the voluntary element of this whole thing, but I'm curious how you square um, the constant themes that you preach about respecting the team and being a great teammate with the fact that uh, so very many veterans have chosen to stay away. Well, first of all, there, there's not a coaches union and I was heavily involved um, with, with the players union. So I, I don't think it's necessarily fair to, to label me uh, pro-union or against union, but I, I do um, value the, the players' union, having been a part of it uh, in a lot of different you know, roles as the executive committee or as a player rep. And to that, I just try to um, explain to these guys that they have to make the best decision uh, for them and, and their own um, personal situation gone through that as a player, was a part of them, chose to to not be a part of them at times. And so I, I respect that. And, and that's the biggest thing that I've tried to explain to our football team, whether it be about voluntary workouts or anything else that may come up, is that we have to respect each other's um, personal decision to do what's best for, for us. And then, you know, like you, like you mentioned, there is – there is a team element to it that we have to focus on. And, you know, there'll, there'll be time for that. And, uh, you know, I'm confident that that will, you know, certainly come together. 
you say uh, all the time, do what's best for the team. So is there is there just a calendar line? Do what's best for you now. Do what's best for the team later. Well, I think that that's something that we certainly think is in value and that's very important. But we're also very respectful of their own personal decision, and, and we're we're always going to try to do what's best for the team, and we're we're going to ask the players. And, and we did touch on that. You know, when we spoke at the beginning of the, the offseason was that there will be some times where we're going to have to uh, make decisions that, that that you feel like are best for you. And then there's also going to be times, you know, that we're going to ask you to, to do what's best for the team. And you know, certainly right now in the offseason, we're going to continue to to coach you know, via Zoom for those players that aren't here and those ones that are here, you know, coach them in person and, and work with them on the field. Luke? Mike, Amani Hooker said that in the secondary, everyone has to understand that they're not independent contractors, but rather working together as one body. What does it take to get a unit like that or really the entire defense on the same page and, and thinking as one and about how they can play off of each other? Well, th I, Luke, I think it starts with understanding your job first and then um, understanding how the defense works and what the other pieces are around you and you know there, there's usually help involved in, in some capacity and one of the things we focused on was trying to get you know as many players as we could to understand the entire concept um, of each and every play so that they would be able to understand what maybe the linebackers were doing and how they fit uh, or they could help a, a corner or how they would work with a safety uh, and again there's times where players may only be able to function knowing their job and the more comfortable they become doing that, uh, then they can begin to understand everybody else's job and, and how the, the, the whole, whole thing comes together. So, you know, it, it takes time, it takes understanding, it takes communication. And I think first it starts with knowing, you know, what your specific role is and understanding that to the best of your ability and then being able to branch off from there. Is it necessary for a really good defense to, to get to that point where you're understanding the whole as opposed to just your own role? Well, I would say that the, that that's critical, having players that understand offensive formations, offensive personnel groups, what they may be expecting, you know, based on prior exposure to tape, being able to communicate where tight ends are located, where offensive line splits. And, there, there's a lot that goes into it, you know, obviously you know, playing well and, and, and coaching. Well. Corey Curtis. Hey, Mike, hope you're having a good summer. Uh, with the Corey, addition Corey, does this mean you're back? I, I don't know. Am I back in the circle of trust or am I exiled I, to the I, island? I, that was your decision. I, I, okay. didn't, I, wasn't, I didn't break up with you, Corey. I, you know what? All, all, all good friends have fights from time to time, Mike. So we'll, let's chalk it up as that. Okay. It's all, I, I'll, I'll take all take, the way. You take me back, Corey. I will take you back in a heartbeat. All right. I'll, I'm even going to get a tie to match. To see, it was good to see you guys all over there. We've been trying yeah. to get it as hot as possible. I know Teresa loves the Nashville heat. <laughs> uh, with the addition of Brian Hill, what was it about him was it, that it was attractive? And is Derek's heavy volume the last two years make getting a, a vet at that spot a priority? Well, I you know, Brian has come in, he, he kind of knows the system, right? It changes, but I think that his background has been in the system. Uh, we had, you know, Keith had had some familiarity with him. He coached him in Atlanta. Uh, he was a bigger back. He has shown some ability to play on special teams. I think that was something that, that went into it. Uh, he plays hard. I think the thing I've noticed is his effort, Corey, and this is you know, your first exposure. But when we've asked him to, to finish, he doesn't have to think about it if he doesn't have the football in his hand. You know, he's sprinting and doing what we ask him to do to finish. He's been uh, engaged in the meetings. And so, you know, just excited to get to work with him and, and see how he can, you know, progress. Now, as far as Derek's workload, I think we all understand that Derek's fully aware of what that may be and, his, and how he um, prepares to, to go through that and, and how we, you know, manage that or how we choose to use it. Glennon. 
Hey, Mike. Um, Hi, John. Talking about some some of the uh, the rookies from last year, Christian and, and Darrington both had you know issues with uh, with injuries from time to time. Do you think maybe much of that uh, had to do with you know the odd off season uh, last year? Uh, or on the other hand, you know, do they have to look at, at maybe training or, or doing something differently this year to kind of avoid some of those nagging injuries? You know, I, I don't say a whole lot about injuries, John, so I'm certainly not going to try to give an opinion on how how we avoid them. But there is a level of you – know, as a professional athlete or any type of athlete, you have to you know, just make sure that you're conscious of taking care of your body and, and – doing things that, that could prevent them you know, prehab. And if you've had a history with something, making sure that you know, you're doing everything you can to, to avoid it. You know, there's some things that are, that just are unavoidable. And then we all talk about the, the injury rate being hundred percent in, in pro football, but it's how you respond from them and how you, how you deal with them and handle them. Thanks. David Beauclair. Mike, on the subject of personal decisions, how impactful could it be to a team if a bunch of guys don't get vaccinated? And, and what has sort of been your message to guys about that particular decision? Um, I, I try to share all the information that I get from the National Football League. I try to um, do my part in, in educating them. I, I try to explain to them it's a personal decision but it's also a decision that's going to to affect the family and, and, and the team so you know, we'll, we'll continue to try to educate players the best that we can uh, on it and, and we'll work under whatever protocols that that we're given are you monitoring who has and who hasn't been or, or do you not worry about that yet at this point well, for the most part, we coordinate the, you know, the administration of that. So it would be hard not to, to, to monitor. Terry. Mike, uh, given the circumstances last year with all the virtual meetings and no real live OTAs, are you a little less concerned maybe with the guys who are not here? that they know what to do and they'll come in in shape and they'll be ready to roll when they do arrive? Uh, Terry, I'm focused on coaching these guys that, uh, that are here on the field and making sure that our coaches and myself are getting the guys that aren't here the information, you know, if they want it. And uh, that, that's my focus. I, I don't have, you know, other concerns other than making sure our players, if they choose to travel this weekend, do it safely and, and spend time with family and um, and maybe take time to to honor those men and women that uh, that, that gave their, their sacrifice for our country. That That's my concern as it moves forward here in the next couple of days. Ben Arthur. Hey, Mike, are there any players um, in particular, any of the young or, or the new guys that have impressed you um, particularly, you know, just in, in these kind of first few days of OTAs? You know, Ben, I, I think that they, um, they've all shown progress. You know, I, I see them begin to communicate better with each other. We throw a lot at these guys. So, you know, just try to single out you know, one or two players. I, I don't think that that's, that's fair because they've all done some things well. They've all, you know, made some mistakes and tried to make some corrections and, we certainly appreciate the ones that don't make the same mistake twice that, that recognize something that happens early in practice and they're able to come back and, and correct it. But enjoying working with this group. I think that they've shown improvement here in, in the short time that we've had them. Handful of follow-ups, Jim Wyatt. And Mike, what's the process like for you as a coach? You got so many new players uh, learning who maybe responds to criticism, who responds to praise, and is that just kind of a something you just kind of learn as you go? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's something, Jim, that as you get to know your players, and, uh, 
just doing the best job that you can to, to want to allow them to, to see if, you know, how they make mistakes. I think this is a big thing with, with coaching that I've learned in a short amount of time is that how do you hand, how do you allow players to make mistakes? You know, we, we as coaches put so much time into, you know, an installation or a meeting and, you know, you want it to be perfect and you know that it's not. And so sometimes you're out there and you're trying to tell them what to do before the play or you're trying to correct them before they even know that they did something wrong. And, because you, 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 know, you want them to do it right and you want the time that you put in to, to, to reflect that. And so I always try to remind myself and our coaches that see, if, see how we allow them to make mistakes. Like, hey, you know, ask them what happened here. And if they can tell you, well, then there's no need of coaching them. They know they made the mistake and why they made it. And if they don't know, then that's a great teaching opportunity to say, you know, three was split or two was split. We need to make a call here to, to protect this guy or whatever it is. And um, that's something I think we have to, to focus on. And certainly as we become better teachers. And one more for me. Um, I, I know it's a long process building up to get ready for camp, but what, what are the things you'll look for most during the early OTAs to kind of get you rolling? Well, I mean, as the head coach of this football team, I focus on effort and finish. Uh, making sure that we have two elements that allow us to do those things, which is conditioning and, and a mindset. Uh, we can help them with the conditioning, uh, the, the mindset we, we can try to look for. But those are the elements that we talk about as it relates to our effort and finish on the football field and in practice and in games. And then I'm also stressing technique and fundamentals because I know that when talented you know, football players play with technique and fundamentals and effort and finish, you know, a lot of good stuff can happen. Paul? Mike, are there guys who have been participating in the meetings uh, but not in the field work? Uh, yes. I think that you asked, and you kind of broke up a little bit, that you asked if there were players that were um, present at meetings but not participating in field work. Is that what you asked, Paul? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I would say that there's probably. Yes. There's some Sorry, guys. I'm breaking up. He said there are two guys. And are there people Thanks, who guys. were here rehabbing inside who weren't in the field? They're on. Uh, Coach, with, with Elijah Molden not being out there as much, how is he? Picking up this all uh, the defense rather as far as you know the different checks and everything that's required of him, uh, especially as a guy who may play nickel and those types of things. How is he in the classroom? Is that you seeing like carryover from how you said that he had that, that high football IQ? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think that uh, one thing we've been able to do is um, we've been able to do some rookie walkthroughs, Tron seven on seven that have allowed um, Caleb and and some of those other players that haven't been able to to practice with us full time, uh, to go out there and, and see formations and see checks. And it's good for young receivers to, to break the huddle and always, you know, get new uh, installation, new formations, new motions, new routes. Uh, so that's something that we've been doing. We have a little bit extra time uh, with the rookies. So that's something that we've installed um, or implemented here um, to, to allow guys to, to get that extra teaching aid outside of just film or classroom or questions that allow them to go out there and, and, and stand and walk through and, and, and get some of those things. Buck. Uh, yeah, Mike, Bruce Arian said you guys were planning on having joint training camp practices together. Is, is that something that's official? And, and do you have any plans to do that with any other teams this offseason? Look, you don't believe Bruce when he says that? No, I do. I just haven't seen anything from you guys. We're the ones traveling, so we wouldn't we wouldn't advertise it. No, we're we're planning on working with them, and that's a great opportunity for us, you know, to to have the opportunity to go down there and uh, practice and, and, and with the defending Super Bowl champions and you know, how talented they are, and great coaching staff. And it'll be a good experience for us to to go down there and try to to, to compete against them. And any other teams? Oh, I guess the Falcons would be the only other road road team. 
Uh, no, not right now. I don't think there's any plans for that. I, I know that we're just you know, looking forward to, to, to having the, the joint practices there in Tampa Bay. Thanks. Okay, guys. Thank you very much.